Welcome back to Jessie's Bookshelf. And as you can tell by the title of today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of my Colleen Hoover books. Now I say my, because I haven't bought in every single one of her books. I own about seven of them and that's all I'm gonna buy. That might give you a bit of a spoiler. Some of them I did like, and that is why I'm ranking them, but some of them I really did not like. And this might get controversial because a lot of the ones that I really didn't like, it seems like the world loves, and I have no idea why. Before I get started though, I just wanna apologize that it's been a month since I've been on this channel. Life has just been so crazy, and I always try and prioritize my main channel, so this channel kinda got left behind, and I'm so sorry. I really wanna get a constant schedule on here eventually, and I will, just be patient with me. So here are all of the Colleen Hoover books that I own. Okay, I think I own about seven of them. We've got Reminders of Him, Without Merit, November 9th, Layla, Verity, It Ends With Us, and Ugly Love. I feel like these are some of the most popular ones, right? Am I wrong? So if you've read any of these books, stick around to see if we have the same opinion. And definitely don't be afraid to tell me your opinion down below in the comments. Everyone's gonna like different things and that's okay. And if you haven't read any of these and you're thinking of reading them, wait to hear my reviews because it may change your mind or it may encourage you to. So let's get started. We're gonna be starting with the very bottom of the list, so the one that I did not like the most, and then we're gonna be ending with the one that I loved the most. So the worst book in my Colleen Hoover collection, in my opinion, is, drumroll please, Verity. Oh my goodness, I hate this book. I despise it. And I feel like everyone loves this book. Whenever I'm on Book Talk or anywhere online, people are saying, read Verity. If you care about my opinion, Opinion. Don't read Verity. I gave this book a two out of five stars and I almost feel like that was me being a little bit generous because I don't think Colleen is a bad writer in any way, but the themes of this book I just could not mesh with. It made me a little sick. So this book is about a struggling writer named Lowen and she's basically on the brink of financial ruin until she ends up accepting a job offer of a lifetime. She meets this guy named Jeremy Crawford who is the husband of the best-selling author Verity Crawford. Crawford. Now his wife Verity got into a very terrible accident. So she's in a coma, she can't move, she can't write or do anything. So he hires Lowen to complete her books for Verity. So Lowen arrives at their house ready to sort through all of the notes in Verity's office. And she accidentally comes across this unfinished manuscript that she wasn't supposed to see. She's very curious, decides to read it, and she uncovers some very disturbing truths. But she can't tell if the book is meant to be fiction or non-fiction so she can't decide what she thinks about Verity. And this whole romance takes place between Lowen and Jeremy while upstairs in the bedroom, Verity is unconscious. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this book is meant to be sort of like a horror, which is why I picked it up to begin with. And did this book have some genuinely creepy moments? Yes, for sure. But was it also very disturbing in a bad way? Yes, for sure. This would never be a reread for me. To be honest, I found the characters to be very boring. I felt the romance to be very forced and quick. And the sad thing is when you don't like characters in a book, you can't find reading it to be enjoyable, right? Because you're not rooting for anybody. You just don't really care. You're not that connected. Also, without giving away any spoilers, I felt myself being utterly disgusted by some of the chapters. When Lowen is reading Verity's manuscript, I just literally felt like I was gonna throw up. When I finished this book, I almost felt guilty for reading it. Like this book was a crime. <laughs> If you've read this book, you know what I mean. It makes you just feel so unsettled and not in a good way because you know, I like feeling anxious reading horror books, but that wasn't that kind of feeling. This was like a guilty, I never want to see this again, even though it still sits on my shelf somehow. Anyways, if you don't agree with me, that is totally okay. I know so many people love this book and I don't get it, but we can still respect each other and I still love you. Okay, the next book in the ranking that I did not like very much was November 9th. I gave this one two 0.5 out of 5, so we're a 0.5 up from Verity at least. This book is about the characters Ben and Fallon. They meet at a restaurant and they have an instant connection. So this is one of those like insta-love books. But I feel like Colleen Hoover usually does 
does those kind of books. Ben is an aspiring writer and Fallon is an actress, but Fallon is moving across the country the day after she meets him. And she also feels like she won't be ready for a serious relationship for another five years when she turns 23. So they come up with this plan to go on with their lives and date other people. And they'll meet each other every single year on November 9th. So they'll see each other once a year and not have any communication the rest of the year. Now, because I'm trying not to give away any spoilers in this video, that is just the surface level part of this book. It goes so much deeper, so much darker. And you know what? This book was just okay. It wasn't bad in any way, but it was very predictable. I called the twist after like chapter two, which made the reveal of the book not very exciting for me, obviously, because I already knew what was gonna happen. I hate when I can call twists right at the beginning because the book was like leading up to the twist. And when I got there, I was like, okay. I already knew that. I also hate when books have two different perspectives of characters, like when it jumps from one character in one chapter to the next character in the next chapter. I just have never vibed with that, and this is what this book does. And I did not like reading the internal monologue of Ben. I felt like he said a lot of inappropriate and kind of offensive things a lot of the time. For example, there's this paragraph that says, I shoved the dress back at him. I don't want to wear that. I want to wear this. No, he says, I'm paying for dinner, so I get to choose what to stare at while I eat. Eat. Excuse me? Yeah, he's just like my least liked book boyfriend, if you will. And yeah, just an underwhelming conclusion. So didn't love it that much. Okay, next on the list of books I didn't really like is Without Merit. Now I gave this the same score as the last one. So it's a 2.5 out of five. This book is about Merit, who is a 17 year old girl who recently stopped going to school. She dislikes most of her family members and believes that they all don't care about her. And the most important part is that she has a twin sister named Honor. Interesting names, Merit and Honor. Well, Merit starts to fall for Honor Honor's boyfriend Sagan and he's just like living with her family for reasons that aren't really fully explained. Oh and they also live in a repurposed church and that's literally all there is to it. Two twins, one likes the other one's boyfriend, there's family toxicity and that's it. So boring. It just, this whole book took place inside one house and it was just filled with family members having terrible relationships. And once again, I struggled to like this book because the characters weren't very likable to begin with. So I wasn't rooting for anybody. I didn't really care about what happened. And it felt super repetitive because it just took place in the same place every day over and over. And it was Merit trying to get with Sagan and that was the whole thing. I was happy that it did talk a lot about mental health and the benefits of going to therapy, but that was the only thing really going for it. Didn't love it. On to the next one. Okay, the next one is Ugly Love. This one's getting a little bit better. This one I gave a three out of five. So not amazing, not bad. It was, it was good. This one is about a girl named Tate who is moving into her brother's apartment. And the first day she goes there, she sees this drunk guy passed out in front of the door. So he's not letting her inside the apartment. She has no idea who he is. Well, he ends up being this guy named Miles, who is an airline pilot with a secret that he's not willing to tell anybody. But right at the start, you can tell he has a serious broken heart. You're not really sure why. And he doesn't want a relationship with anybody. So they start off as like friends with benefits. And it's one of those, make sure you don't fall in love with me books, you know? But of course things start to get messy. Secrets from his past come out. And it actually does get pretty dark. Like it starts off sort of surface level, but we do get pretty dark. And there are some kind of disturbing parts in this. Now I did read this book in a day. And even though I didn't really love it, it still shows you that I was willing to like keep turning the pages all day long, right? Just be prepared, the majority of the book is just sex, which doesn't make it terrible, but you should be prepared going into this. Once again, she does the thing where one chapter, it's one character's point of view, another chapter, it's the others. I really don't like that. I did not like being inside Miles' head and I did not like his poetic writing style. I feel like Colleen was trying to be super unique and like creative with his point of view. And it was just really strange. Like some pages had like five words on it. Like it was that kind of poetic sort of thing. Didn't really work for me personally. I was really glad that it was a happy ending. I like when stories end on a good note and that way the rest of the day I don't have to like think about it or stress about it. So yeah, it was good. That's all I have to say about it. Okay, it's finally time to get into the better books. Next we have Reminders of Him, which I gave a 3.5 out of 5. This book actually just recently came out. This is about a girl named Kenna Rowan. She made a terrible, terrible mistake. She had to go to prison for five years because of it and she lost the custody of her child. So when she finally gets out of prison, she is determined to go and get her child back 
back or at least just meet her for the first time because she was pregnant while she was in jail and had her child taken away from her. So once she's finally free, she goes back to the town where she committed this horrible act, which you will find out what it is in the book. But obviously the townspeople don't like her. It's a very small town. People know who everyone is. So she has to change her name, try to hide from everybody there. She meets this guy named Ledger and their attraction is instant. Once again, it's like an insta love thing, but you find out he's somehow involved in the life of her daughter. So things get very complicated because he loves her daughter, but he loves her as well. So he's trying to figure out how to make that work because she was a criminal once. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't want to give away too many spoilers. There's not too much to say about this book, except that it's one of Colleen's better books, in my opinion. It's filled with emotion and heartbreak. And for me, had a very satisfying ending. And what's weird is that for the first time, I wasn't really that invested in the love story. I was more invested in Kenna and her being reunited with her daughter. But Ledger was definitely a hero in this story. And I really did like him. He is definitely one of the better book boyfriends, if you will. But yeah, this book was very straightforward, very easy to digest. I would say it's definitely worth the read. Okay, this next book is probably controversial because a lot of people don't like it and I loved it. This is Layla. I gave it a four out of five stars. So this is about a guy named Lead and he meets a girl named Layla and he loves her right away. He's convinced he will spend the rest of his life with her. And yes, this is an insta love that I actually did not hate, which is very surprising for me. They immediately start a relationship, fall in love, but then there's a tragic accident that happens to Layla and it leaves her fighting for her life. And after weeks in the hospital, Layla recovers physically, but not mentally. She's a very different person from when Leeds first met her and she's not really the woman that he fell in love with anymore. So he whisks Layla away on a vacation and takes her to the bed and breakfast where they first met. He's hoping to like rekindle their love. But when they arrive, Layla's behavior takes a very bizarre turn and the book just gets crazier and crazier from there. This is another one of Colleen's horror books. So it's kind of like a horror romance, but there's a lot of like paranormal aspects in this, which I was excited about reading. Like the very first paragraph of this book is, I placed two layers of duct tape over Layla's mouth before I came downstairs, but I can still hear her muffled screams as the detective takes a seat at the table. It took me in right away. And I don't even know where to begin talking about this book because the first half of it, I absolutely hated it. Like I was ready to give it a one out of five stars. So if you do read this book, I suggest reading it all the way through because at first you're not gonna like it. You're not gonna like leads. You're gonna think he's a really horrible guy. But once you get to the end, you will understand the twist will make you love the entire book. Now, were the horror scenes a little weak? Yes, I feel like they were very cliche, like doors opening and closing, lights turning on and off, things moving around. You know, nothing new with the paranormal side of things. And I was almost gonna rank this book down with Verity when I first started reading it because that's how bad I thought it was. But then I finished it, okay? It's so hard to describe because I don't want this video to contain any spoilers. If you knew the spoilers, it would make sense to you. If you've read this book, you know what I mean. All I'm gonna say is read it and get through till the end and you'll understand. Okay, so by now, you know, the last book is going to be It Ends With Us. This was what I thought was the best out of her seven books that I have right here. I also gave this one a four out of five stars, but I think I would rank this just slightly higher than Layla. This is about a girl named Lily Bloom. She owns a flower shop, hence her name. And it's actually a flower shop for people who don't like flowers. <laughs> she meets this guy named Ryle on a rooftop and he's a surgeon who tells her that he never wants to get married or have kids. Well, as you can probably assume, they fall in love, start a relationship. And this book bounces from Lily's past to her present. And I cannot say any more without spoiling it. If you've read it, you know, it's really hard to give a synopsis without like spoiling the entire book. Is it the best book I've ever read? No, but it's definitely her best. This book just takes you through so many emotions. And if you've heard people talk about this book, there is a twist that will literally knock you right off your feet or off your bed or couch or wherever you're reading this. If you have never read a Colleen Hoover book and you want to start somewhere, I would suggest this one. But yeah, I don't want to say too much about it, which sucks because I can go on and on about this book. So if you want me to do like a spoiler video separately, I definitely can to give you all of my opinions and what I thought. But yeah, definitely a shocking book, a really good book. And she's actually working on the second part to this that I think comes out this fall. And I'm so excited to read it. But yeah, that's me ranking all of my seven Colleen Hoover books. I don't want to buy any more because I feel like her books are very hit or miss to me. Like, as you can tell, there was a few books that I loved and a few books that I really didn't like. And I don't really want to buy another book where I'm not too sure where I'm going to stand with it. So yeah, comment down below if you've read any of these books, what you think of it, if you're wanting to read any 
any of these and also comment down below what books you want me to review next and yeah I hope that I'll be making a lot more videos on this channel just be patient with me I definitely will get into a routine very very soon but yeah I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video bye